Welcome back to the channel everybody, I'm Dino. You know, it is an absolutely beautiful day here in Niagara Falls, Ontario, and I'm waiting for my friend Carl to come over. He's got some new parts for his bike that he wants to put on, namely a luggage rack and a new storage box. If you remember, his bike was stolen about six or seven weeks ago. The police recovered it, and now he's in the process of putting back on all the parts that they took off of it that he couldn't get recovered. So why don't you sit back, grab yourself something cold to drink, and enjoy Dino's Tinker Shed. I'm gonna get this place cleaned up before he gets here. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, everybody, well, Carl's finally got over here. It's a beautiful day here in Niagara Falls, and we're gonna carry on today with Carl's rebuild after his bike got stolen, because they took everything off your bike, eh? Yeah, anything, any accessories somewhat. Yeah, yeah. the windshield went, the rack went, his grip. storage box went, what else? The grip covers, the, oh, whatever, the covers. Yeah. Yeah. And they, they weren't really kind to the hardware when they took the rack off. No, crack and smack mechanics didn't have all the tools. <laughs> yeah. So it yeah. looks like they used a pipe wrench and a hammer. Yeah, great. So yeah. luckily the rack you chose comes with all new hardware here, right? Great. So that'll give that'll take care of all that. It'll it'll standardize it. Mm -hmm. Now the rack that you bought is the same rack that I have on my DR. Yeah. Where did you get that, Carl? Amazon. And what was the price on that? I think it was like Ninety dollars or something like that. Yeah, it ranges, eh? It's the exact same rack that goes for two hundred and forty dollars on Amazon, or eighty-nine dollars sometimes. So, got a shop. It's all aluminum, powder coated. Mm. I've had pretty good luck with mine. Mm -hmm. It hasn't bent. We've been off road with it. Had the box loaded up. It's probably maybe not as strong as some of the Tusk ones and stuff. Yeah, I would think. Uh, what do you need, right? Yeah, but. It bolted up really good to my bike when I put it on, mm -hmm. and it's gonna give a nice uh, surface area here to mount this, which is a new toolbox for you, or a- uh, Yeah, a storage container. Yeah, so- or Different stuff or whatever. I always had one on the back of the bike, so you can put your little cooking stuff in there or whatever, I don't know. Yeah, they're nice for a day. I, I, I never had one till you put one on yours. Yeah. And they're handy if you're running to the store or something, you throw a little yeah, stuff Yeah, and in I always, there. when I used to go on trips, I used to have the, thing is my kitchen I had all my kitchen stuff in there perfect Not kitchen stuff but cooking stuff so yeah. I just opened the box I had everything there yeah yeah and where'd you get this one Carl uh Canadian tires yeah and this is like a what do they call them pelican cases similar yeah, it's right the same it's a copy yeah, yeah. It's supposed to be guaranteed and all that's got a vent on it and yeah and it's all foam padded inside yeah. all yeah. that kind of yeah, stuff it's, it's a decent box but I you know you gotta I think it was a hundred dollars so <laughs> So you're in, you're in about a hundred and hundred and eighty dollars oh, yeah. to replace your storage it's rack. A gift that just keeps giving. Oh, I bet, I bet. Okay, and we're gonna mount this probably with nut certs, right? So we can take yeah, it off so if you want yeah, without having yeah. to yeah. monkey around there. Okay, well, why don't we get your bike into the shed, and we'll start getting this thing put on your bike. Okay, Great. everybody, we'll be right back. The new rack is located where the factory grab rails are currently and they're held in place with two cap head screws, one at the front and one at the back. And it's important to also note that the turn signals are integrated into those grab handles. Here, here you can see the really awful hardware those guys put back in place. Before we take off the grab rails, we're going to find out where we want the box to sit on the rack. And Carl wants it back about three to four inches, so we picked a spot just behind these bolts and struck a square line across here so we could line the box up. Once that's done, we take the rack and we clamp it in the vise with some soft jaws. And this allows us to actually mark the placement of two nut cert holes on each side of the rack. Carl's got them in here in pencil. Next, he comes back and center punches these so that the drill has a nice hole to follow and he'll pilot drill these with a small 1 8 inch drill. Once that's done, he'll just follow it up with the 3 8 inch. Now we're ready for nut certs. Now I've shown this nut cert gun before. It's basically like a pop rivet gun. You insert the nut cert tool 
into the hole, squeeze the trigger which expands the nut cert, and then you thread the tool out. Now what this does is it leaves the nut cert in place and allows you to thread a faster into that hole. They're reasonably strong and this is what it looks like when it's done from underneath. The box proved to have one challenge and that's these ribs that run down along the bottom. The rack wouldn't fit in between them and sort of sits high which means when you tighten up the bolts it's going to deform the bottom of the box. The solution for this was to make a couple spacers out of aluminum. So Carl's going to cut these out but man it's hard work. Oh I feel bad for him. Oh look power tools. So anyway he's going to cut out these two pieces of aluminum and uh, once he's done that he'll put them back in the vise and just clean up all of the edges so they're not sharp. He does this just with a file but you could do this with some sandpaper or just about anything a grinder I guess. Once that's done you can see that the aluminum is flush with those ridges. This allowed us to line up the rack and then scratch in the holes where the nut certs are here. Once that's done, Carl was able to put those back on the bench, mark them with a, with a center punch, and then drill those holes out so that they match. Once he gets this done, he's going to place those back on and transfer the holes over to the bottom of the box, and then just basically drill those out. Now we have a matching set of fasteners, rack, uh, washers, and box, so everything should line up really, really good. To make sure that that's the case, we're going to dry fit it on the bench and you can see everything lines up the way he wants. He has his space ahead of the rack and uh, everything looks nice and square. Alright, it's time to get these grab rails off. So on the right hand side of the bike, they have a pair of, I think it was 4mm Allen keys that pulled out relatively easy. On the right side, of course, there's like a Phillips head and a 14mm bolt. But anyway, we got them out. So I guess now it's time to start putting the rack on, right? At this point, I remembered something from when I put the rack, this same rack, on my bike a year ago. And that is the fact that it is not designed to use the factory Suzuki grab rails. They actually are designed to eliminate those and relocate your turn signals onto the rack itself. There's a small hole there that's designed to take those turn signals. Now because of this, the hardware that they sent, although of good quality and would work fine if you were to eliminate those grab handles, well, it really isn't the right length to, to truly mount these things. These sort of short ones here are useless. But we were able to reuse the supplied long hardware, the long cap head screws, um, in the front of the rack. So they were able to go through the um, factory grab handles, through the rack, and into the bike. And then on the rear, well, I just used um, a long enough uh, M8 bolt that I have in stock to go through the grab handle. Um, and then into the frame itself using the supplied spacer that the kit comes with. It's not really a fault of the rack. If we had have really looked at it a little bit more, we'd realize that the grab handles were supposed to be eliminated and you're supposed to relocate the turn signals. However, we both wanted to have those, those grab handles in place, so we were able to modify it. The one thing that would be nice is if they were to mention this on the, on the, uh, the advertisement, you know, must eliminate factory grab handles or at least include some instructions to tell you here's what you're supposed to do. It took us, you know, us old guys a you know, few minutes to realize what, what was going on. However, it did work out and we were able to get the rack mounted up. So let's carry on with that. Once we placed the longer cap head bolt in the front, we were able to pivot the grab rail upwards. This allowed us to fit the spacer between the actual rack and the subframe you can see here. Once it was tightened down, it was good and solid and it allowed us to come back in and place the hardware to hold the case in. Now you can see we used some large fender washers and we actually put a little gob of silicone underneath the washers to seal these. And I think overall it looks pretty good and it feels really, really solid. I think we're done.
I think that looks pretty good. It's great. It looks super. Everything worked out somewhat. Yeah, other than the hardware, I guess, it, it, it went together fairly smooth, eh? Yeah. And I like your top case. I, I like that a lot better than mine. It's a more rugged case than the one I have. Wow. $15 versus $100. <laughs> it's true. Many of the same features, but I think this one, the hinging, the latches, everything are much better than mine. Yeah, it's a better, yeah. But I do like the look of that rack, and it seems really solid, so. Yeah. Okay, well I guess that about closes up this chapter of uh, Carl's rebuilding a bike. I hope everybody enjoys this video. It was a lot of fun uh, putting this thing on. In all, it probably takes about an hour to do a job like this. It took us about four by the time you're done all the filming. But um, if you do like it, leave a comment down below. Let us know what you think. And uh, I know Carl reads all the comments too, so make sure to make a shout out to him and uh, he, he gets a kick out of that too, for oh, sure. Yeah, funny. But uh, until then, uh, we're hopefully gonna get out for a ride finally. And uh, we'll see you soon here on Dino's Tanker Shed. I could probably use some pizza first. Oh. <laughs> I'm always eating, I'm sorry.